Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salaam alaikum here. And continuing the topic of exponential signals, in which today we see the property, the periodicity property of discrete time complex exponentials, right? Now in the continuous time, we, we know about these two properties. The first is that the larger the value of omega naught, the higher is the rate of oscillation of the signal. You know this, right? As you increase omega naught, Frequency will increase, which means frequency is what? It's the rate of oscillation, the number of cycles per second, it will increase. Right? And this complex exponential, exponential 0 omega naught t, is periodic for any value of omega naught. It is periodic for any value of omega naught. But this, uh, if now, if we come to the discrete time, which is exponential j, omega naught n so its periodicity is in a certain range its periodicity is in a certain range is that okay now we'll come to that range fine but first let's say we consider this signal exponential j omega naught n and we increase the signal which we now we we put omega naught equal to omega naught plus 2 pi so let's say we have it over here exponential of j omega naught plus 2 pi into n so which means that this would equal exponential of j omega naught plus uh, j omega naught plus j 2 pi multiplied with n or I could say that this would equal exponential of j omega naught n into exponential of j to pi n. Now this n would be integer values and we know that exponential of j to pi n is equal to 1. So this implies what? This implies that exponential of j omega naught plus 2 pi times n is equal to the same signal as exponential of j omega naught n which means by replacing omega naught by omega naught plus 2 pi we have the same signal exponential of j omega naught n which means that we got the same signal back now in continuous time signal you get a new signal with any other fundamental time period over here you got the same signal back Alright, so which means that now over here if we conclude the range, so the range would be from 0 to 2 pi. So, in the discrete time signals, we have the range of omega naught in between 0 and 2 pi. Or we can also say it from negative pi to a positive pi. This is if you talk about the range. Now where is this maximum, where is this minimum? So you know that the frequency is maximum at omega naught is equal to pi, okay? Let me tell you that frequency is maximum at omega naught is equal to pi, fine? Now, I have some other points also. Signals whose frequency is near to pi is a high frequency signal. Is a so, I will write it over here. <coughs> Sorry. Signal whose frequency is near to pi. And let me read out from the book so if, if I could have any other point as well. Alright. <coughs> So the exponential uh, at frequency omega naught plus 2 pi is the same at that frequency omega naught, right? So the signal with frequency omega naught is identical to the signal with frequencies omega naught plus 2 plus minus 2 pi plus minus 4 pi, etc. So we have a range which I have written over here, fine? Because of the periodicity implied by equation 1.51, which is this one, <coughs> What happens is, so let me drink a sip of water. Ramadan is over, so we can drink now, okay? So, 
um, because of the periodicity implied by this the signal does not have a continually increasing rate of oscillation as omega naught is increased this signal they're talking about this signal that this does not have an increasing rate of oscillation as omega naught is increased why because we saw it by getting till 2 pi it is coming back to its original value we see further rather we as we increase omega naught from 0 we obtain signals that oscillate more rapidly until we reach omega naught is equal to pi fine so the signal frequency is maximum at omega naught is equal to pi uh, as we continue to increase omega naught we decrease the rate of oscillation until we reach omega naught is equal to 2 pi so from pi to 2 pi the rate would decrease which produces the same constant sequence at omega naught is equal to 0 therefore the low frequency discrete exponential uh, values near omega naught near 0 2 pi and other even multiples of pi with high frequencies are located plus minus 2 pi or multiples of pi so over here i was writing this point a signal whose frequency is near to pi or other odd multiples of pi and odd multiples of pi this was the point i was checking in the book odd multiples of pi uh, have a higher frequency uh, no is a high frequency signal okay signal whose frequency is near to pi is a high frequency signal because the frequency at this point are higher whereas the signals whose frequency is near to 0 or 2 pi so let me write uh, i would not write it full again 0 2 pi or you can say even multiples of pi e1 multiples of pi they are low frequency signals they are low frequency signals because the frequency of this signal is low at these particular points all right so let me tell you again the frequency increases from 0 to pi so i will write it, these points over here frequency increases from 0 to pi then it decreases from pi to 2 pi then decreases from pi to 2 pi and then what happens and repeats in the same way this pattern repeats in the same way increase from 0 to pi decrease from pi to 2 pi and repetition in the same way all right now the next point is about the condition of periodicity so this was for continuous time signals okay now over here these are the differences that we've seen now we see the condition for periodicity in the discrete time signals so if i give the heading condition for periodicity now we know that for periodicity uh, what is the condition that x of n should be equal to x of n plus capital n isn't it so and what do we have the signal over here is exponential of j omega naught n so this should be equal to exponential of j omega naught n plus capital n so this implies what exponential of j omega naught n is equal to exponential of j omega naught n into exponential of j omega naught capital n fine so this would cancel out with this and this would imply that exponential of j omega naught capital n is equal to 1 this is equal to 1 and this is only true this could only be true this is only true if 
omega naught n is a multiple of 2 pi. 2 pi n, let's say the multiple over here is m. And uh, this omega naught, this n is capital. This is the period, okay? This omega naught n is equal to 2 pi m. This m is any integer value. How did this come? So this, you know, this is from the Euler's theorem. We have seen this again and again about two times. Fine. You know about this m also. This is equal to 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2. So I will write it over here. Plus minus 1 plus minus 2 plus minus 3. And so on. This is the same as k we wrote over there. Fine. So now if you want to find out the fundamental period, so what do you have is you would do omega naught by 2 pi, omega naught by 2 pi is equal to m by capital N. If this condition is satisfied, n would be the period of this function. This is the condition, okay? m by n is integer by integer and a rational number. So if this is omega naught by 2 pi, is some value integer by integer and this is a rational number so only then this function is going to be periodic and capital N is going to be its period is that okay this condition we have seen for the complex exponential this condition is also true for sinusoidal signal Now I will explain to you what do you have. Now let's say we have an example. An example is cos of, let's say, for example, we have x of n equal to cos of, what is it? It is 2 pi by 12 into n. 2 pi by 12 n. Right? So now over here have a look. Omega naught is 2 pi by 12. Omega naught is 2 pi by 12. Now you put it over here. Omega naught by 2 pi. So omega naught by 2 pi would be what? Omega naught divided by 2 pi. So multiplied with 1 over 2 pi. So 2 pi 2 pi would cancel out. And omega naught by 2 pi would come out to be 1 over 12. Now 1 is an integer, 12 is an integer. So we have the value integer by integer. I did not mention it over here. So we should have this as integer by integer. So we got an integer by integer. The, 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 the lower value, the denominator is the capital N. The period is 12. This 12 is the period. Which means after each and every 12 points, the function is going to repeat. Now if the same thing, if the same function we see in the, this, in the continuous time range, which is cos of 2 pi by 12 t, let's say. So over here we would have what? We saw that t is equal to t naught. The period is 2 pi upon omega naught. So which is equal to 2 pi divided by this. So which means multiplied by 12 upon 2 pi. So again, T0 in this case is the same, which is 12. In this case, this is the same. Fine. But have a look. Let's say we have another example. Taking x of t is equal to x of t is equal to what? Uh, 8 pi by 31. Cause of 8 pi by 31 t. Cause of 8 pi by 31 t. So what do you have in this case? T naught is equal to 2 pi upon omega naught, which we multiplied by 1 over omega naught. So you multiply 31 upon 8 pi. So pi pi cancels out. T naught comes out to be 31 by 4 in this case. Isn't it so? It's 31 by 4. Now if you have the same signal, x of n in the discrete time range so you have cos of 8 pi by 31 n so in that case what do you have omega naught by 2 pi so omega naught by 2 pi would be what omega naught is 8 pi 
upon 31 and divided by 2 pi means multiplied by 1 over 2 pi. So 2 pi 2 pi would cancel out, it would come out to be 4 upon 31. 4 upon 31. Now this capital, this 4 is your small m, this is any integer value, we have nothing to do with this. This 31 is your n, which is the period of this particular function. Isn't it so? It is, right? Now, uh, so we've seen that the period may or may not be the same, but you know, we see it properly through one other example. So let's say we have x of t equal to cos of t by 6. So have a look, here omega naught is equal to 1 over 6, so t naught would be uh, 2 pi by omega naught, so 2 pi divided by 1 over 6 means multiplied by 6, so this would be called 12 pi, right? But now if you consider this x of n, so you have cos of n by 6, so in that particular case, what would be the case? Omega naught by 2 pi if you have omega naught by 2 pi so this will give you 1 over 6 upon 2 pi so it is 1 over 12 pi and have a look this is not a rational number i told you it, if, if it has pi if it has under the root if it has exponential so this is irrational so this is irrational and which means this is not periodic this is not periodic so it is not necessary so you write down the conclusion for yourself that it is not necessary that if a signal is if a signal is periodic in the continuous time domain its counterpart in the discrete time domain must also be periodic this is not necessary fine so if i read from here it is not necessary that, that a signal in continuous time domain and discrete time domain have the same period this is also not important so you have two uh, conclusions from this, so conclusions you write for yourself, okay? You write for yourself, I'm telling you. Conclusions. So number one and number two. So number one is what? That if a function is continuous time, a function in continuous time is periodic, it may or may not be periodic in discrete time. This is number one. Number two is that if a function is periodic, uh, that that the function if periodic in both continuous and discrete time so it may or may not have the same period in continuous and discrete time domain so that's all about it that is finally all about it and I think I have no other point to read out from the book and so it gave me 31 by 4 it gave me 31 why because in this the, the time is uh, uh, you know infinite so it has each and every point included but over there it has 31 by 4 is not included it only has 31 it has 32 the next point so that is why that's all about today the conclusions i believe I've, you have written it down for yourself that's all for today that's all about this lecture see you in the next lecture very soon inshallah with the unit impulse and unit step functions till then take care of yourself and everyone around you goodbye